Intermittent fasting can be a powerful tool to help you reach some of your health goals, but chances are you're probably doing it wrong. There's data to show it's not only about the total number of calories you consume. Now it comes down to the quality of the nutritional intake and the patterning. In this video, I wanted to go over the seven mistakes that you want to avoid when it comes to intermittent fasting. So let's get started. Also, real quick, before we get started, it would mean the world to me if you hit the like button down below for the YouTube algorithm and turn the bell on to stay up to date with new weekly videos. The first mistake is choosing the wrong interval. And I get it. At first, you might want to be so motivated that you choose to do the alternate day fasting right at the start. This can sometimes be a problem as it's likely to be way too drastic to begin with. For some people, taking in less than 1200 calories a day might help you reach your goal faster, but it also significantly increases your hunger and causes bone and muscle loss too, which is what the scale will show. There's no point to go for the hardest interval in the beginning. The easiest interval to start off with is the 1410 method, which looks like this, where you only eat from 10 a.m. to 8 p.m., which is a 10 hour window followed by 14 hours of fasting. Then gradually you can increase it to the famous 168 method, which starts at 12 p.m. and ends at 8 p.m., followed by the 16 hours of fasting. The second mistake is overindulging. Some people see fasting as a way to allow yourself to have extra calories and gobble up more unhealthy food. Depending on what you eat, it can theoretically cancel out the health benefits that fasting is supposed to bring on. It's still very important to eat healthy food during your eating window and give yourself 20 to 25 minutes to finish your plate. Eating slower, will definitely have a positive impact on how much you end up eating. Fast eaters are known to consume a lot more calories than slower eaters, and this is because it takes 20 minutes to get the signal from the brain that you're actually full. Another tip is to get in with a plan. All it takes is 10 minutes every couple of days to lay out your eating plan, jot down ideas for each meal and snack you'll have for all the days that you will be fasting and those that you're not. Also be sure to have those foods stocked in your home to make meal prep that much more convenient because if you're like me, if you go to a grocery store while you're fasting, you'll end up getting a lot more than what you actually need. The third mistake is over restricting. Fasting doesn't mean you're quitting food or that we're trying to cancel food. The goal is to help reset the body and optimize health and longevity. And the people that have the most success with it are those that finally feel like it's natural part of their routine and they no longer have to think about it as a diet. Part of reaching this state of mind is by not over restricting yourself. Shifting the focus to being more intuitive about what you're putting into your body instead of worrying about all the restrictions helps you conquer this. Because remember, your body still needs to fuel to function, so make sure to enjoy healthy, flavorful food on non-fasting days, those that hopefully you have written down already. The fourth mistake is breaking the fast with the wrong food. After the fasting time is up, it's better to introduce food that is easy to digest and with a low glycemic index in a reasonable amount. Here's a list of what these foods look like. The goal should be an adequate lean protein, such as meat, poultry, and fish, as well as plant-based proteins like legumes, which will help keep you full longer. Usually people will have better results from intermittent fasting if they eat a high protein meal at least four times during their eating period. This will not only help keep you full for longer and make the next day of fasting easier, it will also maintain your metabolically active lean body mass, which you don't want to lose with intermittent fasting. The fifth mistake is eating your dinner too late. And this actually has a lot to do with our circadian rhythms. We are meant to eat during daylight and rest when the sun goes down. If you eat dinner too late at night, it can disrupt the circadian rhythms and can affect your sleep-wake cycle. Also, we have a randomized crossover trial from 2021 titled Eating Dinner Early Improves 24-Hour Blood Glucose Levels and Boosts Lipid Metabolism After Breakfast the Next Day, which found that Despite a difference of only three hours, eating dinner early at 6 p.m. has a positive effect on blood glucose level fluctuation and substrate oxidation compared with eating dinner late at 9 p.m. And the study participants would go to bed at midnight, so about six hours before bedtime is a good rule of thumb. Not to forget to mention countless other benefits that time-restricted eating provides, such as glucose intolerance, insulin resistance, beta cell function impairment, steatosis, and some more when compared against 
ad libitum eating, which means eating whenever you want. The sixth mistake is not drinking enough water. Water is a part of hundreds of metabolic reactions in our body. This is why we can feel lightheaded and sluggish when we don't have enough. Make sure you're drinking enough water throughout the day on fasting and non-fasting days. This will help you regulate your blood volume, regulate your body temperature, and can carry nutrients and waste products. And lastly, the seventh mistake, you're intermittent fasting when you shouldn't be in the first place. A big mistake is that during a longer fast, your body can get stressed out and it produces higher levels of cortisol, which is a stress hormone. And progesterone is a precursor to cortisol. When cortisol levels increase, progesterone levels decrease. But guess when else progesterone is already low? One week before your period. If you do a prolonged fast, your progesterone levels will drop even lower, causing irregular periods, short cycles, and premenstrual spotting. Not to forget to mention elevated mood changes, sleep disturbances, and anxiety. So definitely do not do a long fast one week before having a period. Secondly, anyone who meets these four criteria shouldn't fast either. And the people on the right should definitely ask their doctor first to see if fasting is even right for them. And also, although some people report increases in energy when, with intermittent fasting, others get the opposite effect. They experience fatigue, no concentration, and low energy. If this affects your productivity, or if you have a type of career where energy and concentration is needed, then intermittent fasting may not be right for you. But I'm more curious to hear from you guys though. Let me know what your thoughts are on this topic. Would love to read them down below. In the meantime guys, click the video I made here on cortisol lowering foods and I'll see you on the next one.